In the last few decades, the United States and the former Soviet Union have accomplished something stunning and historic. The close-up examination of all those points of light, from Mercury to Saturn, that moved our ancestors to wonder and to science. Since the advent of successful interplanetary flight in 1962, our machines have flown by or orbited or landed on more than 70 new worlds. We have wandered among the wanderers. We have found vast volcanic eminences that dwarf the highest mountain on Earth. Ancient river valleys on two planets, enigmatically one too cold and the other too hot for running water. A giant planet with an interior of liquid metallic hydrogen into which a thousand Earths would fit. Whole moons that have melted. A cloud-covered place with an atmosphere of corrosive acids where even the high plateaus are above the melting point of lead. Ancient surfaces on which a faithful record of the violent formation of the solar system is engraved. Refugee ice worlds from the trans-Plutonian depths. Exquisitely patterned ring systems marking the subtle harmonies of gravity. And a world surrounded by clouds of complex organic molecules like those that in the earliest history of our planet led to the origin of life. Silently, they orbit the sun, waiting. We have probed the origins of our planet and ourselves by discovering what else is possible, by coming face to face with alternative fates of worlds more or less like our own. We have begun to better understand the Earth. Every one of those worlds is lovely and instructive. But so far as we know, they are also, every one of them, desolate and barren. Out there, there are no better places. So far, at least. During the Viking robotic missions, beginning in July 1976, in a certain sense, I spent a year on Mars. I examined the boulders and sand dunes, the sky red even at high noon, the ancient river valleys, the soaring volcanic mountains, the fierce wind erosion, the laminated polar terrain, the two dark potato-shaped moons. But there was no life, not a cricket or a blade of grass or even, so far as we can tell for sure, a microbe. These worlds have not been graced as ours has by life. Life is a comparative rarity. You can survey dozens of worlds and find that in only one of them does life arise and evolve and persist. <laughs>